The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to FRC Media, I'm Keith Tebow. We're getting set for the November 7th municipal election here in Fall River and we're speaking to as many candidates as possible between now and then to help you make informed choices when you vote. Today I'm pleased to be joined by one of the five incumbent school committee members looking to get re-elected. We're here with the school committee member Sarah Roderick. Sarah, thank you for joining me, I appreciate it. Anytime, I'm glad to be here. So, um, you're about to complete term number one. Yes. And I know I, I interviewed about the, you about this probably beginning of the year. How's, how's it gone? What have you learned this first term? I've learned that there's a lot of work to do mm -hmm. um, and that there are a lot of good people that are doing that work. So it, I've learned, and I don't think that this was new information. I think I knew this going in, but I don't think you understand the caliber or the amount of work that needs to get done until you're right in the thick of things. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got some good people that are trying really hard to make some stuff happen in this community so that way we have a healthier, more thriving community for our kids. So in terms of um, you know, meetings are once a month, you're also mm -hmm. on subcommittee meetings yep. as well. Um, has that workload, I know it's, it's something that you anticipated, I would yep. sure going in, but it, did it meet the, your expectations and how you manage the rest of your life. You've got children, you've got, you know, <laughs> career. All the things. Um, did it meet my expectations? I mean, I, I think so. Yeah. It, it wasn't more than I thought it was going to be. I actually came in fully prepared to do a whole lot more work, but I think that's also how I approach things in general. I never have just one thing going on. So juggling that really, you know, it really wasn't all that different because it's just sort of the piece that I'm used to. So I, I don't think the workload was any different. There is a lot of follow-up that I think folks don't see and that it's not just you show up to a meeting once a month or a subcommittee meeting once a month and that's the end of it. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that has to happen as well. And so again, I don't think that really surprised me, um, but there is a lot more than I think what folks see on the outside. How's your relationship been with uh, Superintendent Ponce? We, I think, I think that we have a really good working relationship. Um, we speak regularly. You know, she's always been responsive to the questions that I've had. Um, you know, I think that she's trying really hard to stabilize this district after a very long time of instability. And I think she's she's working coming out of a pandemic, and that's stressful and, and I almost hate to use that phrase coming out of a pandemic but I think there's been a lot of changes and she's trying to ebb and flow with them so I think our working relationship has been pretty solid I would think um, because we've I think have the same vision in mind that it's always about the kids and the families and what do our staff need in order to make this all successful. I believe when we spoke last um, and even when we uh, did something similar two years ago you had mentioned that one of your goals was to look for those that may be a little more un underrepresented. Yep. Um, parents, students, and the like. How do you feel you've achieved it, uh, trying to achieve that as a, a school committee member? So I'm one person and I can't achieve anything on my own, no. right? That's the reality of it. Um, I think that I've had a lot of focus on special education and that's mm -hmm. one of those populations that really has been underserved for a very long time. Um, I think that I've asked a lot of questions. I've challenged a lot of things when it comes to special education and I, I think that's a good thing. I, I hope that it's brought some attention and awareness to what we need to do to push inclusion efforts, genuine inclusion efforts throughout the district. But it's not just about our special education kids. The stuff, the work that we do with our special ed kids really trickles out to all of our kids. Mm -hmm. So the, the work that gets done there is really beneficial for all of our students and I think people sometimes forget that, that special ed is not this entirely separate entity and that we have special education students in all of our classrooms. Um, so I think that that's been a huge focus. At this point, it's become the running joke that I'm going to ask about inclusion, right? How does this support that? Um, and I, I won't stop doing that because that has to be at the forefront of what we're doing. You know, a lot has been made over the past couple of years um, about the influx of funds into mm -hmm. the school department. The Student Opportunity Act has been yep. a boon for funding education here mm -hmm. in Fall River. 
uh, and I've said this phrase before, money is not, not everything. No. Um, how do you feel the, um, the, the district sits in terms of attaining its educational goals? I mean, there's a lot that needs to be done. You talked about the pandemic, um, the loss, yeah. learning loss during that time. I guess, how in your view um, has it been going and how as one committee member can you help make those conditions better? So I think those are two separate questions. Sure. So we have what what are we doing with those funds that have been allocated to the district for a good reason because the district has been underfunded for a very long time mm -hmm. and so now it's sort of recouping some of what we haven't had. So there's that piece, but then there's the other piece of how do we then use those funds to make sure that kids, families, staff have what they need. I think for the most part, there's been a real push to make sure that those funds go directly into classroom resources, whether it be to directly to higher staff or whether it's to um, new technology or new curriculum pieces or or any of those things I think that there's been a lot more focus on getting the money into the classrooms and that's really where it needs to be what I would love to see is a bigger push for community engagement because our kids are in school for you know up to eight hours a day but then they go home and so there's got to be a, a better partnership with what's happening after school hours and I don't know that we've always been able as a entire community this is not just specific to the district I don't know that we've always done a great job of bringing all of those pieces together so I think some of that could be used to push that those initiatives forward because again we have our kids for only eight hours a day there's so much that happens at home and out in the community mm -hmm. that then comes into the school so if we support our kids outside of there then our kids are better able to come in prepared and ready to learn I know when I'm on, um, on social media, um, I follow the Forever School Department, and there's a lot of uh, posts about filling, needing to fill yep. positions, and that goes on today. Mm -hmm. um, is that a concern? Because, and, and how, do you, how do you try, um, I know it's more of an administrative function, but as a committee member speaking to people, how do you try to, to tell qualified people that could mm -hmm. help our students, hey, consider Fall River. There's a lot going on here. There may be a, a position for you uh, to you know, bridge that gap. So I think some of it is changing the narrative about what we have going on here. So I've said this for a lot of years and people laugh at me when I say it, but we have a self-esteem problem mm -hmm. in our community where we think that we don't deserve better. Something bad happens and inevitably it's, oh, well that's Fall River for you. But no, that's not Fall River for you. I've lived here my whole life. There's a lot of good that happens. And so I think first of all, we have to believe that we deserve to have solid qualified people in these positions. and then and we have to reflect that in what our hiring practices look like and what our um, interview practices look like and how we are recruiting people and really have that conversation. Usually the first thing that comes out of people's mouth is, oh, it's a large urban district, you know, it's really hard to be in there. How about it's a large urban district that's very uniquely connected to one another. So even though it's a large urban district, our schools don't always feel like they're just these large super schools, right? They feel like small communities and that's an incredible thing to be a part of so just shifting how we're even looking at ourselves so that way we can have better conversations and recruit folks that are more willing to come in but it's not just about Fall River mm. we have hiring issues across the country um, I was reading an article this morning that just um, identified that teachers are actually paid 73 cents on the dollar as compared to other professions with similar degree patterns and so that's actually a decrease from about 30 years ago where teachers were paid 93 cents on the dollar so when you look at that and look at that comparison, of course it's going to be hard to recruit solid teachers to come into the district. We have some amazing folks now, but it's really hard to keep them here when we keep looking at these challenges. In terms of student success, um, a lot has been made in the district about absenteeism, chronic mm -hmm. absenteeism. Um, I believe from the MCAS numbers that just came out, the district has done better this year than, than last year, but it's, still, similar, it's, but, right. it, but it's still it's still it's still a problem. Mm -hmm. How can you know the district and you as one school committee member help promote the need to be in school and communicate that not only you know a lot of it is, is parental involvement. Mm -hmm. So two separate things there. Again. So we've got MCAS yep. and that's a whole different beast right. and then we have attendance. Right. So we 
in order for kids to be in their seats every day, we have to address the barriers that are preventing kids from getting in their seats. Because when we're looking at elementary age kids, those kids are not the ones that are responsible for getting themselves up every day and getting themselves mm -hmm. to school. So we have, we know that transportation is a challenge in this community. And so we've got to make sure that those systemic issues are addressed before we can say, oh, families don't want to send their kids to school. Of course families want to send their kids to school. But we've got to be able to outreach to families and figure out really what's going on that's mm -hmm. preventing our kids from showing up every day. Um, and, and I would argue that it's the same for our adults. What's happening? What are the barriers? Is it food on the table? Is it clean clothes? Is it transportation? Is it that families are not quite understanding why they need to be in school, right, and what that partnership looks like? Right. Well. I appreciate you coming. I wish you all Happy the best in the election, and we'll, hopefully we'll talk again soon. I'm sure we will. Absolutely. Thanks right. so much. And thank you for joining us at FRC Media. Please make a point to vote on Tuesday, November 7th.